Hi, I am Bill Murgan Jaiwal. I am the lead author of the paper MEG Imaging of High Frequency Oscillation Strengthens the Presurgical Localization and Outcome Prediction. We know that epilepsy is the second most common neurological disorder, and at least 30% of the patients with epilepsy are refractory to medical treatment. And uh, in these patients with medically refractory epilepsies, to attain a surgical freedom, they have to undergo uh, surgical resection of the epileptic focus. And even after surgery, only around 60% of the population uh, achieve a favorable surgical outcome. And multiple studies have shown that from intracranial EEG studies, the high frequency oscillations can precisely identify the epileptogenic zone. However, to date, these high frequency oscillations have not been adopted to the clinical practice for uh, prognostication or for prediction of the surgical outcome. And there are few non-invasive. Uh, there are few reports from the non-invasive studies such as EEG and MEG, which has shown that e HFOs can be detected in these modalities, but the clinical utilities have not been explored before. So the primary goal of the present work is to investigate whether the HFOs can be used clinically for uh, accurate pre-surgical assessment and post-surgical outcome prediction, with the following objectives of uh, to detect the short lasting HFOs and the cortical source time series and then the source localized these high frequency oscillations. And also we did a source localization of the other oscillatory activities in other frequency bands such as alpha, beta, low gamma and high gamma and establish the relationship between the source localized oscillatory activities with the surgical resection, surgical resected cavity. And finally, clinical validation of this surgical uh, sorry, source localization with the surgical outcome. So it's a prospective hospital based study and the criteria for recruitment of subjects into this uh, study were the those who had a frequent intraectal discharges on EEG or MEG and those who underwent all the pre-surgical investigations including scalp EEG, PDEG, three-test MRI, neurosurgical assessment and then few, few patients who underwent PET and uh, all the patients further they underwent MEG that's a magnetoencephalography which is a 360 channel electron neuromag track system. So finally in our cohort we had uh, 25 patients with mesial temporal lobe epilepsy patients and 27 patients with uh, focal neocortical epilepsy patients. So patient undergoes uh, recording of MEG data and uh, we use independent compound analysis to identify the cardio component and the artificial component to reject out and then we rebuild the raw MEG data without this artificial without those artificial components and then we identify our interactive lapidary form discharges uh, based on the uh, special. So simultaneously, each subject undergoes a T1 meter MRI from which we construct a semi realistic volume conductor model which is uh, warped to a MRI grid, and then we also parcelate, we parcelate using an AL atlas for labeling the virtual time series. The source reconstruction of the uh, oscillator activity are obtained using, were obtained using. Uh, Minimum variance. Let me show you a subject S16 uh, where the epileptic spikes, uh, epileptic spike which is unfiltered in the frequency band is shown and then filtered at each frequency band and we can observe the high gamma oscillation and then the high frequency oscillation when filtered at uh, 50 beta 80 hertz and 80 to 200 hertz and there is a corresponding increase in the spectral energy in the time frequency domain. Here we present a representative case of a 19 year old female patient who had epilepsy for past 8 years duration with a T2 flare MRI showing a right hippocampal sclerosis and then a routine MEG showing a, a right temporal clusters of uh, spikes. She underwent under surgery or she underwent surgery where right anterior temporal lobectomy with right hippocampectomy was done. Then we source localized 
the each oscillatory activity at a particular frequency band it's alpha frequency band beta low gamma high gamma and hfo band and we can observe that high frequency oscillations or localization overlaps very well with the resection cavity compared to other frequency bands so the current bar graph plot illustrates the concordance proportion of HFO source localization with the presumed epileptogenic zone and the concordance proportion of HFO source localization with the surgically resected cortex are uh, very high compared to the other frequency bands. And also the strength of agreement for HFO source localization with the presumed epileptogenic zone and the strength of agreement for uh, HFO source localization with the surgically resected cortex are very high compared to other frequency bands. Finally, we determine the sensitivity, positive predicted value, and accuracy of each frequency band in predicting the post surgical outcome. And we observe that the high frequency oscillation had the highest sensitivity of around 78% and the accuracy of around 78.84% in predicting the post surgical outcome. So, in conclusion, if HFOs are recorded and localized non invasively with MEG, we can precisely identify the epileptogenic zone and also improve the post surgical outcome. The evidence presented in our study supports the fact that HFOs could be utilized in a clinical setting. And thank you for your attention.